Welcome everyone, Dr. Mandel here. Here's a program you're going to want to listen to the end. My dear colleague, Dr. Sofer, a renowned cardiologist, heart specialist, we have so many great things that we're going to share with you that's going to help the health and wealth of you and your family. How are you, Dr. Sofer? I'm great, Dr. Mandel. How are you? Boy, I got the chills. It's such an honor to have you here with us. I want you to really give your heart to the community, my subscribers as well as new subscribers, about cardiology, about diet, about fat burning, about the things that we're, everyone out there is trying to put their fingers on. Hopefully, we're going to answer a lot of those questions. Let me just uh, explain. Uh, or just ask you, may I ask, uh, a little bit of your background in cardiology. I know you have have done so much, but just for the viewers to let them know a little bit about you. Sure, sure. So I am a uh, board-certified cardiovascular specialist. I went to, like you, were, were Miami guys. I went to the University of Miami for my medical school training and then went out to uh, the world-famous Cedars-Sinai, USC, UCLA uh, for my cardiovascular training and came back and really decided that uh, circulation was the most important thing for me to understand and to simplify for as many people as I possibly could and make everybody's circulation optimal. I wanna talk about the, the basis behind, behind the Mediterranean diet, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but there's one thing that I preach and you know what, I'm sure you know what I'm going to tell you. Sure. It's uh, extra virgin olive oil. Sure. And I know that this man right here is a big believer in extra virgin olive oil. We know the benefits that the monounsaturated fatty acids. And he said something that really hit a funny bone. And it's like anything else. It's like the, the oil in our car, but the oil in our body, what it can do. The circulatory system, that train track, it needs the right type of smoothing, the right type of, of, of lubrication. And extra virgin olive oil, or EVOO as it's commonly called, as long as it's the right, the right type, you will actually be able to potentially live longer, have less strokes, heart attacks, disease, with as little as half a tablespoon sprinkled into your food, substituted for the butters. And the butter, remember, butter comes from an animal. So you're talking about Animal Sat fat, saturated. Saturated fat. So you're substituting it for extra virgin olive oil's version of fat. And my goodness, the difference is not just what we think, it's actually proven. The American College of Cardiology, American Medical Association, American Heart Association, everybody agrees. I can't tell you how many articles I've come across nuts, how healthy they are for the heart. Mm. All right. We're going back, right? Go back to the mono and saturated fatty acids. Sure. Uh, what he's saying is the, the nuts sort of delivers the delivery source for the right type of fat. So back to that lubricant of the body. It also happens to have plenty of fiber, so it fills us up. It makes us not walk around unhappy or, or, or hungry, which can lead to stress and cortisol release and all sorts of other uh, untoward things. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a strong believer, not only in me, but in the science ah. that suggests that, that certain nuts, almonds, pistachios, uh, et cetera, are, are great for you. Absolutely. Um, you know, and we're, we talk about nuts, and I, I always say to Dr. Sofer, I said, you know, what is your opinion? I've spoke to him many times about diets. Understand, this togetherness, this program that we're putting together is not about a diet. I personally don't believe in diets. I believe in lifestyle. Um, what is your opinion? I mean, you go to Atkins, you go to keto. Uh, there are so many different diets out there. But you see, is it really bright? enough for a mind to really think about someone's way of eating or just the right way of eating? 2,000% correct. Fad diets don't work. Even diets as just a diet doesn't work. What really works is understanding what you're putting into your body, how much of it to put in. So smaller portions are better than bigger portions. Yeah, eating more yeah. frequently is correct. better than eating less frequently. Correct. And at the end of the day, staying away from what seems to be the fad diet of the day and stay with, with something that's worked for thousands of years, something along the lines of the Mediterranean. So more fruits and vegetables, less processed food, the sort of pyramid of smarter eating um, is the key. Nothing that's coming and going. All these gray hairs that I got, um, uh, you I don't, know, I don't yeah, show any you mind. might have lost are, 
are have seen diets come and go, yeah. and diets aren't the it's um, the Mediterranean lifestyle that will really uh, help us all. What I really want to focus on is obesity, and one of the important things that Dr. Sofer mentioned was fiber. It makes us feel full. So what does that do? It keeps us from overeating. It keeps us from indulging in our desserts. And the fiber, which beautiful doc, is that when you have fiber mixed with a sugar or a carbohydrate, it slows the absorption of that carbohydrate into the cells. So you're never getting that spiking. And those foods that are usually low glycemic, and that means those sugars that digest slower in the body, is so much healthier than those high glycemic foods that, that actually assimilate real fast. Uh, so the fiber is so important. And I, the best way to get it is in the whole state before it's processed, before it's torn apart. In the grocery stores that we have today, we have the, the, the foods that are gonna make us healthy and the foods that are gonna make us sick. And you've been helping people to navigate that for years now. And I, I just uh, need to applaud you for that. And, uh, and everyone you. that listens to your podcast, video blog, uh, what, what would we call it? The uh, you YouTube. Call whatever, you can call it whatever you want. <laughs> however so, however yeah. it is, this, this yeah. medium that you're able to utilize to get these uh, bits of information that you can go into the same grocery store, come out with Dr. Mandel's information and, and be healthier, or you can go in there sick, or even you could go in there sick and fix yourself often by the choices that you make. Cholesterol being good for the brain, being good for our cells, but when this bad cholesterol over exceeds uh, the good cholesterol, there potentially could be, become more placking. And again, we're, we're building up plaque inside a vessel or wherever it's going, and we potentially can lead to a significant uh, tra tragedy in the future. So yeah, I have spent a lot of my career clearing out cholesterol from arteries in the heart. And that's not the most fulfilling thing because what makes it not come back, number one. Number two, is it just cholesterol or is it other substances? Inflammation. So we we initially looked and we said, hey, cholesterol is high, there's a heart attack or there's 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 plaque in the in the body we need to remove it well it's not quite that simple first of all it's not just cholesterol there are other things like inflammation and we now have inflammatory markers other markers that we see in what's in the plaque it's not purely cholesterol it's only one piece so i call it a surrogate marker if your bad cholesterol is high that's a problem we want to lower it if your good cholesterol is high we want to maintain that but even if your bad cholesterol is low and your good cholesterol is high, there are other markers we can look at. Now, a lot of that has to do with which parents you've chosen, right? So genetics play a big part Correct. of this. Yeah. And we have to know a lot about family history to actually help folks. A lot of that comes with diet. A lot mm. of it can also come with the exercises and the sort of stress reduction that's out there. Doc, I want to mention something that is so big, apple cider vinegar. Many people do this first thing in the morning in an empty stomach. It increases satiety. Uh, there are studies out at what they call the anti-glycemic factor, uh, where it's been proven that the apple cider vinegar, when taken with carbohydrates before you eat a meal, when you're eating carbohydrates before the meal, it helps sustain normal uh, assimilation of the glucose in the cells where you're not going to get the spiking because the theory behind it, which there are studies that shows that apple cider vinegar slows down the motility, the rate of the stomach, how, how the foods come out. I wanted to... Uh, mention something really important that I, I want to maybe give a few words. One of the greatest fruits that you can have for the human body when it comes to your heart, when it comes to satiety, um, what do you think that one is? Probably avocado. That's correct. When you eat an avocado, you get a lot of fiber, you get a, a tremendous amount of good fat, that positive type of fat that we all need. People often get confused by fat because there's a high amount of calories in it will make you fat. It's not the case. The Mediterranean diet particularly shows things like nuts that have uh, a good amount of fat in it, particularly the avocado. That fat is not only helping to lubricate the body, but it's slowing down our hunger pangs. And it makes us sort of not get into this loop of, let me have a little more sugar and then I want more sugar. Making and you more satiated, not allowing you to overeat Exactly. or crave or crave the foods that you are normally eating it takes away from that which is like the magic now there are millions of people out there worldwide who are overweight and they're looking for easy answers on how to burn that fat but there are many different metabolic boosters that we can use uh, like uh, cayenne pepper 
uh, at least apple cider vinegar, the lemon, there are different elixirs we can mix to maybe speed up the metabolic rate. But there's nothing more important when it comes to fat burning than having a good night's sleep. Not only does having a good night's sleep affect your metabolism and affects your circadian rhythm and how your body works, but having a good night's sleep can do wonders for the health and wealth of your body. Any last words you'd like to say on that, Doug? It's, it's perfectly said. If, in fact, we look at a population that has things like sleep apnea or sinus issues or they go to bed too late or wake up even too early, they don't get the proper six to eight hours uh, of sleep a night, we find that they are heavier. And why is that? It has something to do with metabolic rate. has something to do with cravings during the day. It has something to do with things we don't understand. So it is clear we need to get a good night's sleep and how do we do that little tidbits are great like it turns out that when we sleep a little bit colder probably closer to 69 degrees at night we actually sleep better not only that dr mandel but if you sleep a little bit colder and a little bit longer you get that extra boost so a little bit colder your, your body has to keep you a little bit warmer so you're burning some calories as well as sleeping uh, a, a bit longer with the REM level, which also keeps your metabolic rate better the next day. People think that metabolic rate only has to be done by increasing exercise, which is a big plus aerobic exercise. But yeah, you can be burning calories more over time, sleeping correctly, you think about it, increasing your metabolic rate naturally, which everybody wants the easy way out. But we want to stress one thing, diet, is so important. Food modification, choices, sleep, stress, hydration, exercise, they all go hand in hand together. And the last part of this segment, I want to talk about veins. Many people are worried about DVTs, those deep vein uh, thrombosis that occurs within the, the veins of our legs, uh, varicose veins. And there is not a better person to, to speak to about this topic than Dr. Sofer. This is a specialty. He trains medical doctors, not only through the country, worldwide. This is a specialty. Uh, so just a minute or two, what can we give to the, to the public out there, to the people throughout the world, about clotting of the veins, about varicose veins, uh, about gravity that pulls down, traveling uh, in an airplane, not using the legs, sitting too long? These are things that I know a little bit about but I'm gonna give it to the expert. Well, thank you, Dr. Mendel. Um, at the end of the day, I am a heart doctor. I'm a board certified cardiovascular specialist that has 360 degrees of circulation and half of that is the veins pulling the used blood back towards the heart. If it doesn't move fast enough, guess what? Clots can happen and instead of getting blood to the heart and lungs, you actually get clots and those clots can kill. That's the dreaded DVT. We hear about it periodically about a you know, an athlete or a reporter or someone that, 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 that gets into trouble with these things. So I took a lot of effort in understanding veins in our practice. And I want to spend a couple of moments in telling you guys about how to avoid those clots and how to avoid the earlier part of those clots, which can be some of the varicose veins and the ugly veins that we see on our legs. So let's start out with this idea that 180 degrees or the return of the circulation starts at the tip of your toes all the way up to your heart. This is my foot. This is my foot actually in a specific, what's called a compression, a graded compression sock. You have blood that I got to take from my uh, tip of my toes all the way up through my abdomen into my lungs and then oxygenate it by taking a deep breath. Well, imagine I'm, I'm a big guy. I'm like 6'5". So when I stand up... You're a big guy. <laughs> when I stand up, I got to get blood flow from the tip of my toe all the way up. Well, how exactly does that happen against all this gravity? What really happens is that the calf is my second heart. Now, I'm a heart specialist. I'm not a calf specialist. But I learned over the years that if I don't move this calf muscle, every time I walk, it moves blood through the veins up into my knee and then that actually has a series of valves that move blood towards the heart. The problem is that those little valves are the size of your fingernail and the consistency of hair. So that means that they're fragile and they can break. They can break because you know we get older, they can break because we've had a trauma, they can break because we're maybe a little overweight and has to go through too much tissue. It can break just because of genetics. So when about half of us get to about 40 years old, 
almost all of those folks, about half the population, has these little broken valves. Well, then blood washes backwards and it starts to pool. And that's why we feel a little bit of achiness in our veins. And, and that, and it, most of the time, it's, it's the blue color, the veins. Right. Why, why is it blue? It's blue because it's got no oxygen. Okay. It. All it has is lactic acid and waste products because the muscle just used it and spit it out. Gotcha. So if you got acid in your legs, you can imagine when you come home, you want to get on that lazy boy and lift your legs. Cramping, cramping, cramping pain. and tired legs and uh, actual pain. And then the worst part of that is if it gets worse and worse and we don't treat it with something simple like a compression sock, if we don't t uh, uh, treat it, it can become an ulcer. You could cut it and it doesn't get better. Doesn't um, heal. Doesn't heal. Or, or the, the most dreaded thing is a little clot forms and goes into the deeper system and travels north. So this can all be prevented by a bit of knowledge. And if something very simple you can get at any drugstore, a, a graded compression sock. This happens to be a 2030, so it's a certain millimeter of mercury. And what's happening with this is like an ice cream cone. It's tighter at the bottom and looser at the top. And when I move, it moves with me. And when I don't move, it's constantly kind of pushing blood north. And that, towards gotcha. my heart, is gotcha. going to stop all of those problems. Okay, so hypothetically, you, you, we have someone who does a lot of traveling on planes, mm -hmm. that sits in a desk all day, maybe right now on their smartphone, not moving, laying in bed, or just being in an awkward position, pushing down against gravity. Mm -hmm. um, what are some things that they can do to help Dr. or prevent? Mendel that's a great question. We see we saw a lot of this during the quarantines where people were normally, you know, yeah. getting on a they subway active, or whatever. Active. So they're zooming at home yeah. or sitting yeah. at home, not moving the calf, even with a compression sock for too long. And what happens is lactic acid builds up. You start getting swelling and all sorts of discomfort at the legs and those valves start to deteriorate. So what we need to do is, first of all, move. Even without the compression sock, you actually don't need the compression sock when you're walking. Your calf will do all the work. Gotcha. But when you're not walking, if you're on a long plane flight, if you're on a long drive, if you're gonna be sitting at a computer for a, a long time, a compression sock is great, as is moving the calf. So some people oh. just remember to do that every 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes in an hour. So at the end of the hour, you do that 20, 30 times, you're probably fine. Or some people have these little, you know, sort of a pivot and a roller ball, uh -huh. um, or just get up and walk for so, a few minutes. So everything's going back to movement again. Yes. All mechanics, all biomechanics, all movement. Now think about this. This is genius. It sounds so simple. It's like kind of using an ice pack, saying, well, an ice pack's not gonna help me. Well, it could do wonders for you if you're in need of it. Right. But think about it. You have a muscle, you have veins that run through the muscle, in order for these veins to pump that deoxygenated blood up against gravity, that muscle has to squeeze. That's your second heart. Right. Right? Wow. Doc, I want to thank you. Little toast. Cheers. Great information. Great education. I really appreciate your time. It's so nice that we can just talk over a cup of coffee about the value of health and wealth for the world. Anytime. I really enjoy hanging out with you and your, your viewers, and uh, it's, it's really a pleasure for me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and thank you so much, and God bless.